politician, engineer and newspaper owner. John Taylor's love affair with newsprint began at Queen's University. Today, his Alpha newspaper group is the largest in Northern Ireland. It consists of more than two dozen weekly newspapers, from the Larne Gazette to the Longford News. The Alpha Gazette is one of the oldest papers in Ireland. It started in 1844. At that time, its charter was very much one for the establishment for the Conservative Party and the Anglican Church. But, of course, times have changed very much since then. Well, we now have about 26 papers, I think, at the moment. It keeps changing. We are the largest newspaper group in Northern Ireland, and we're also the largest in the Midlands in the Republic. At the moment, papers are going through a difficult time. All papers are. In Ireland alone this year, in 2008, after seven months, seven papers have closed down. They're all free papers, but, see, they don't have any cover price, so they're finding it quite difficult. So I'm very pleased that I have managed through my interest in the local community and my interest in newspapers to keep them owned here in Ireland, serving the local communities. Well, we work on that philosophy that we're locally owned. I've moved all the offices into the centre of every town we serve. Uh, some of those, when we took over those papers, the offices were miles out of the town. I thought it was ridiculous. The journalists must be in the main street, meeting the people, hearing the gossip, knowing what's going on. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Well, there are some years when I've taken no dividend whatsoever because the company needed the money. It couldn't afford to pay a dividend to me as well. Uh, we were maybe buying another newspaper. Perhaps we were investing in new offices, which we've done in places like Burr and Tullamore. And uh, it was important that it kept its capital to, to, to invest in these buildings rather than pay me as the chairman of the firm a big dividend. There's more to life than money. It's enjoyment of life, and I've had a very interesting life. I've been through all kinds of problems and, and all kinds of successes. And uh, as our local Presbyterian clergyman one day told us in our man, you know, so-and-so has died, and somebody met me in Scott Street outside the Ulster Gazette, and he said, and how much did he leave? And I just said, the lot. If newspapers are the family business, engineering is in the blood. In the 1970s, John established the Gosford Housing Association, which is still involved in providing social housing in his hometown Armagh today. Well, my grandfather was a civil engineer and architect. My father was the same. And I went to university and became a civil engineer also. I have a daughter now who's a town planner, so it's very much a family tradition. Well, Barrick Hill lay vacant for about 40, 50 years, totally derelict, no roof or anything. And I thought that could be nicely restored, so I got our Gosford Housing Association to buy the terrace. But to make it financially successful, we developed the rear gardens into a modern housing estate called Fockaballa Court, and the front of it we turned into apartments for single people or small families. Well, in the 70s, there was a campaign to introduce Irish into street names in Northern Ireland, bilingual. So I seized the initiative and said, we'll have the first Irish street name in Armagh City. We'll call it Fochabella Court, which means clear the way, get out of the way. And Fochabella, of course, is the war cry of the Royal Irish Fusiliers, whose barracks were just across the road. I feel that I'm contributing towards the history of Armagh City. I think it's uh, one of the finest cities and towns in the island of Ireland, and everyone should visit it. Two cathedrals, an observatory, a planetarium, a mall, and I don't mean a shopping mall, I mean a lovely green mall lined with trees. It's right in the centre of the city. What other town could compete with that? <laughs> <laughs>